Włosów posiety funemus, włosy z tyfie fun sot, włosy z posiety funemus, włosy z tyfie fun sot, wyrod de męż fun ersten troje de rozejde. Von echten Treue hat er zählt, der Wind die Fleht. Dem Geuer von meinem Volk hat euch geklagt, der Wind die Fleht. Was poschet er der Emmes als die der so? Poschet er der Emmes, als tief er der Sot. Wer's hat zum ersten Mal, der Sen, die Sohn, die echte Rot, Rot der Sen, dem poschetsten Emmes, dem tiefetsten Sot. Wo's poschet er der Emmes, als die Pferde so, wo's poschet er dem es, als die Pferde so. Simple Truths and Deep Secrets, the poems of Menke Katz, are where the individual meets the universal, beyond time and beyond geography. Menke's words and images penetrate our secrets, soides, and reveal the truth, emes. Menke returns time and again to the simple and deep truths of his ancestors and his kindel yom. The imagery of nature and remembered sacred places of his forefathers were a constant theme of yearning yearning and returning to the soil and beauty of his childhood home, Michalishek. I know father, Messiah will come from Michalishek, riding a donkey through Svir and Svinsyan, where there is the holiest soil in the world. Ich weiß, Tate, Moshiach wird kommen von Michalishek, wird auf ein Esel reiten durch Svir, und durchs Finzian, dort, wo die heiligste Erde auf der Welt ist voran. Ich weiß, Mama, Moschiach wird kommen von Michalischek, weil in Ganeden geblieben ist Michalischek, und mit den Wurzeln übergekehrt liegt in Himmel Finzian. Dort, wo die Bankschaft ist wie Gott, und an Onheb, und an Breg, Wird Moschiach kommen, oi Michalischek, oi Svir, oi Svinzian. Menke Katz was born in the Litvish Svinzian, his father Hirsche David Katz in Svir, and his mame, Badone in Michalischek. And there, the kid Menke spent his Kinder Jorn. It was during World War I when hunger and poverty ravaged but Michalishek had magical places he could roam, the banks of the river Vilia and the mysterious forest. And Menke's amazing imagination thrived and he was inspired to poetry. Menke, a child of fear, his bare feet bruised by weeds which fight stones, cleave rocks for their lives. His tatters smell of the tall grass of the swamps, neverlands in his eyes, famine in his teeth, shouts for bread with a mouth soiled with the waste of bleak fields, as if out of a dung bath. He muses over a riddle. Where is the most wondrous puddle on earth, if not in this pot of lentil soup? 
enchanted mud simmering over, a deft fire, a flame of gold. He hears the lentils bubble, calling him into choice tastes only kings may scent. Gripped by a trance, he suddenly leaps into the seething pot and turns into a moaning puppy. Smeared with fire, juice, blood, horror. The wounds embrace him as if hugged by scorpions. The lentils gloat at him like eyes of sea monsters, threaten to chew him alive. The monstrosities and horrors of World War I terrorized all the Jews in Europe, especially the poor ones, ensnared in poverty, hunger, and strife. Mother Badona listens to one grained wheat, the laughing stock of the wind, praying for abundance to the devil of dust on the poor earth of Lithuania. Sunset, Elchik sees a humane spider free of prey. He keeps watch and ward as it weaves a net of silk nerves on a gloaming pane, entangling only the evening star Venus in its beautiful cobweb. Oh, a divine spider spinning each and every sign of the Zohar. Messiah is on the way to near the distances of time, return to the first dawn. Menke listens to the clock with its heavy weights, counting moments as a miser coins, dragging nights and days as on crutches. Oh, if he were a clock, he would rush through all tomorrows. In one minute, reach Messiah. The long, heavy war also took Elchik, Menke's eldest brother, who had died as a 17-year-old during World War I and was buried in the base oilam of Michalashik. Menke loved him very much and imagined the Maisalach was Elchik derzeit. Wie in der Zoom ist die Nacht herein, jeden Strahl in Wein zergossen. Und von der Zoom, und von der Zoom gelosener blutig Tropengelschein. No Vertrag, wenn es trotz die kranke Zoom sich euch geheilt, hat sie mit alle Strahlen in meistem Kreuen geschossen. Ist die Nacht? Gefallen. Und sie ist die Sohn in Feier umgetan, durch jeder finster Spältele gegangen, bis auf Gor dem Welt ist ihr Liebe und ihr Purpur aufgegangen. Durch den frostigen Abend, die teute Söhne erscheinen, das Feld tunkelt mit Mais im Asch, in Löschen die Klicht, der Ofen weist, in wieviel, in wieviel Farben zwellen von dem Asch sich Minien geräubte, geräubte Weinen, und zweis der Wind, wie da, wellen räuschen, räuche treuerige Großen, wenn jede Mame wird in Holem nehmen, ihr Sons, Verschwunden Gesicht.
Surrounded by loss and death. Like Menke's family, many Jews longed for a new and better life of freedom and prosperity. America, where the streets were paved with gold, meant wealth and security. For Menke, it also meant seeing Demtaten, who had been in the Golden Medina for five years, gathering glicken, <laughs> or as Menke imagined, sweets and treats. At a patched window. My father, like Columbus, dreamed of America when I was born. My childhood waned at a patched window where I imagined a cake soaring like a cherub, where I saw candy, toys, and cocoa under the wings of a nymph only. The cruel hand of destiny led us through hunger, war, and plague. We were four little brothers and a scrawny sister. In the autumn garret, we heard the song of spring as crawling doves would hear the giggle of their craven victor. The wind through redolent wet meadows was a bleak laughter. Oh, our weary mother carried us through the prosperous thorns of our scared little town, Mikhailshik. From a fairy tale came the night, a spectral undertaker to bury the thorny day of Lithuania. God was the baker from Eden who baked the tasty stars. At last, in 1919, happiness was Grois, Mame Badone, and the Kinder, Berke, Menke, Blumke, and Dieske, left famine behind and set out for America. The road to America introduced the Kinder to amazing places like Vilne and Valshe and unfamiliar dialects of Yiddish. Finally, the strange streets of New York with its exotic landscapes and images and culture different from anything that Menke had known. Uralte Meuren, Miet von Steendo Deures, haben allein zum Teut sich vermischt, wie in sich allein die Ziegel zu zerwerfen. Herbst, der Wind reißt auf die Beimer Krie. Gebeugene Schlepper suchen Masel auf steinerne Gelegers in verloste Chorves. Weißgret, der Mond in Tachrichim. Gretstrick ziehen sich wie Zäuberschlangen. Die Stadt klettert durch Eisen und Hollen, Himmel und Stoll. Ovent, a Säune, a kolische Jalke, a bettlerische Prute. Wert sie in Benaschmosches in ganzen Gold. Von Bengschaft werden meine Finger gräu. A viele Gott auf mein Gas starb von ewig nelnt. A flatterl in Spinnwebs gefangen, sorgt wieder meine Lieder. Despite the fact that New York, with its foreign bewildering surroundings, was so different from his dream of the Goldene Medina. Menke immediately became an echter Amerikaner, immersed in American landscapes, American culture, and he began writing poetry in English. From Menke Katz's My First New Year's Eve on Broadway. This I learned. You cannot long anywhere as on the crooked plain where I was born. You cannot see light as sad anywhere as on a gay New York's Eve on Broadway. The lights vanquish, riot, rout each other. Each light seeks darkness as the darkness light. 
The old year dies raging glory to doom, as if death were the fountain of triumph. In my eyes, the warm, quivering lamplight in combat with the cold, crushing splendor. A straw roof hut humbles the great white way. Each frolic is avid of my sorrow. Through Times Square, as through a huge garish den, wayfares over tower crowns my raised town where mute birds drag with their bills their clipped wings. The moon is a base yellow-fingered coin. A book complains in vain to hill and dale. Not a shred, not a shade of wonder left. While he was becoming accustomed to the prosaic culture of American life, one day at the library, as Menke was sitting, writing his English poems, a young man approached him. He was an ardent Yiddishist and a poet. Hey, do, bist Yid? Is why schreibst du nicht in Yiddish? Why don't you write in Yiddish? This guy made sense. In Menke's Gedanken, seinen gekommen Bilder and echoes von sein Städtel, a wiederkoll in Yiddish. Memories enveloped him. Yiddish echoed from far away, carrying memories of the Alter Heim, Shabbos, Bobe, Zeide, Gmore, and Nigunim. Holy The holy sound of Yiddish, Koidesh. Yiddish Koidesh. Yiddish, when my mama's own bullock for gate came on it. Yiddish is in her groyer stoop, the lichtige malke shabes, über ihr ormer all those goods, die gebenchte licht. Yiddish, mein tates Himmel, neuend wie die Herd, dem Yeshivi Bochers gemore nigen. Mein Bobes Trer von Hoffnung, der Zar von mein Mumme Belkes verbrochene Hände. Werken alt oben bis der tiefster Tief und Hass neben Säune um den See des messerdicken Musser. Mame Idisch, oi Idisch, Keudisch. These beautiful and painful images seem to be left behind with his past in the old world. The Yiddish language, like a conduit, could resurrect memories and give life to those already gone. Yiddish 
needed to be defended against meeting the same fate as the Jews of Europe, defended from its enemies and detractors. Soine von Yiddish, soine von mein Volk. Yiddish is a lost town. Yiddish is a lost town of Lithuania or Poland. Young cut off years idle in every ruin. Here, a good luck charm hovers on broken wings. There, a toy is longing for a former child. Here, desolation breathes fear from an empty cradle. Hark, an unfinished song seeks its singer. There, a word is mute, a tongue cut off. Here, a word is wailing, half slaughtered by the slaughterer. There, a word explodes, a flaming warning, a curse that curls the heart of the traitor. Here, a word dawns, a leading light, a pillar of fire. Yiddish, O oh, mother tongue, father tongue, a nomad pursued through thorny generations. Like my people chased through every wanderway, thorny is the tender tongue of my people. Yiddish fire and brimstone of millennia wandering. Yiddish, a thorny millennium through the enemy's eyes. Yiddish, like my people, breaks every chain, every lock. Without Yiddish, a Jew cannot love his people as the sapling that cannot suck the sap of its roots. The enemy of Yiddish is the enemy of my people. Yiddish, oh, mother tongue, father tongue. Menke loved Yiddish and Menke fell in with the ardent Yiddishists, the Yiddish intellectualen of the time, all writing innovative poetry, like Patsimero, Mein Drei Fisiker Tisch, Via Hing Kendiker Bettler of Kules is a lead von meine Lieder, Kegniber, in a verloster Hul where Walgren sich stern in die Spares von a Zoines Wanziker Bett. A Mensch, bei a Mistfessel sucht a Meichel. Mit Tam und Marzipanes. In these avant garde circles of Yiddish intelligence, Menke was privileged to make the acquaintance of another poet, Alexander Pomeranz. He was much older. He was about 19 years old. He was also very established and a driving force behind a number of experimental journals of Yiddish poetry in America, Le Moschel. Prolet pen, or proletarische pen, or proletarian pen. In other words, writings in the spirits of the labor movement in the context of the far left. Kurz und gut, in short, the Linke, aka the literary Yiddish communists. Menke was provided with a magnificent environment of literary inspiration but the writers and friends were all Linke leftists with a political agenda. Yet for Menke, poetry was beyond politics. Poetry is an art that transcends time and governments and even planets. If not, it was destined to become a muted cry. In a thousand years, poetry will still outlive politics. In Toysen's Yorarum, poetry will still outlive politics. In Toysen's Yorarum, ich habe gesehen die Welt in Toysen's Yorarum. Der Vogel hat sein Lied auf ein Horn nicht gebieten. Die Bienen nicht mit von dem selbigen Schumen. Die Schenkheit Das Lied und die Chochme eltern sich nicht. Ich habe gesehen, ein Gas in tausend Jahren herum. 
wolken mit Säure balladen, himmlische Karawanen. Der Empire State, der glänzt der Karlikl. Jeder Strahl a Pilot, jeder Wind an Aeroplan. Tu in jeden eine die andere sich afreg. Von Wallen? Von Medines Mars, ni Toreb eat kein neue Glicken. In a breiten Schulmalechem is mehr Wunder voran, wenn die Kälberne is Pales von a flinken dicker Brick. Gerecht, ich gebe euch weg alle Kunzen in Heuchen und in Tomen, für ein kielen Schotten von a krummen Äppelbäum. Ich gebe euch weg alle Zylinders von euch geputzte Scheunes, für dem reuen Räusch von Geschmack und Mameloschen. Ich habe gesehen die Welt von tausend Jahren rum. Ich habe der Herd in Wind, aber kann die gewinnen. Ich habe gesehen a Pachet in Penimer von Blumen, a Stein oder Mond von Ponar, a verstummt Geschrei. The creative enthusiasm of thought that appeared to circulate in his cultural milieu gave Menke inspiration to attempt to publish three sisters the poems he had written during the depression. An excited 22-year-old Menke brought Paulette print his manuscript and was dumbstruck when not only was the book not accepted for publication, the leftist Yiddish Writers' Union ordered the poet not to publish it. But he did. And Moishe Olgin, whose name Menke would be unable to forget, the editor of the leftist journal Freiheit wrote lengthy words describing Menke Katz's work is rottenness and degeneracy. He was banned from publishing and expelled from his literary Yiddishist circle. The land of the free locked and barred its union Yiddish printer's doors Everything was closed to him, meet der Schloss. Der Vogel hat mit kein Schloss noch kein Mal nicht verschämt sein Nest. Und sie will kein Fruchtbäum von keinem sein Vermeg nicht verschlossen sitzen. Aber Mabino hat wie mal noch ihm begegnet gest. Oh, soll der Schäd die Tier wie das Herz von allem in verschließen? Has die Schwer des noch gerecht, der Monta Schloss hat jeder Tier. Has der Schloss ist noch da, ist noch da gal in Oig, Klolles in Meul, ist kranker Pachet da, ist da ein Schloss auf die Gehirn. Heißt der Heusche uns hoffen, lernt uns, Leutierzach, der Keuler. Heu der Schloss, wie von der verschultenen Geduld gegossen, schmied weit und Zeit in Eisen ein, Regen noch Regen, Dor noch Dor, als so viel Deure schleidert der Mensch Sturm nach Sturm gegen Schloss. Seh, hat brecht dem Schloss, dem stummen Peiniger, Feier und Zorn. Hinter uns, an uralter Hand, is great die Sonne allein as Schoston via Keul. Und gegen uns sehe ich dem letzten Schloss, die letzte Klolle, in der Musee gräulen. Moishe Olgin also spelled out his sins. Let it be clear that all the psychological twists and turns, the riveting personal feelings, our material borrowed right from the bourgeois camp. To the extent that it is brought into the proletarian camp, it serves one purpose only, to demoralize the workers, disorient their consciousness, and weaken their capacity for struggle. The book is 
a primitive love of the shtetl, and a failure to contribute to socialism and realism or to be useful to the movement, Menke should know that a tramp is not a proletarian and a bum is not a freedom fighter. All written in good mameloshin. So Menke answered, in good mameloshin. Oi, Olgin. Olgin, ze, wie viel Glieder in jederin von uns, a so viel Wunden, und wie viel Tume in dem Seines Guf, a so viel Hyäne schmeicheln. Für uns ist euch dein Teut, doch wend von dicken, gräusamen Heuschech, a Fackel, a Zitzundener, und Chodz, sie will sich erzählt, mit gebrochen Gemüt, über dein Ohren sich verkleiben und sich zerklemmen wie ein Kind und lassen nur die Augen Lieder von Tränen schreiben. Und Rotsch, sie will sich erzählt, über unser größten Brach verbrechen die Hände und wie in Wissen Holm kurzen sich vor die eigene vier Wände nicht zu der Freien, dem Säunes finster Blut. Wenn mir, wie du, mit straundicken Hass sitzt hinten dem Mut. In einem prosten Dienstag, in prosten Dienstag, hast du deinen letzten Sohn vergang gesehen. Noch sie kennen dem Frühling nicht verstummen, der teurige Ohren. Orgen sehe, wie viel lebendigen Flamm gegen Säune wird noch schleidern dein Zorn. Wie brav wirst du noch sein, dort, wo dein Schlachtfeld es gewähnt. Es bleibt ein Wort, erleuchten die Kerwächter. In unser jeden Sturm wirst du mit uns noch stürmen und wirst noch heldisch fechten in unser jeden Krieg. Wes noch die Vorn von Schlacht zu Schlacht vor euch noch tragen, bis wet von Alter finsternisch, nahe Sun sich fuhren, es wird dein Teut durch uns ewig tragen, du wirst ständig hilchen durch unser Gelächter, du wirst ständig siegen mit unser Sieg. The prolet Pennick was expelled from prolet Pen. Menke felt oppressed in New York, and a heavy veil of pessimism enveloped his poetry. No publication in the leftist movement would publish his work, and Menke was left isolated in his work, lonely, einsam, and bereft of colleagues. A klole der Einsamkeit, verschulten sei, O oh, Einsamkeit, sei in ein Zimmer, sei auf breite, vagabundische Wegen. Ich hab dich, ich hab dich, O oh, Einsamkeit, die verbrengste Jahre meine ungetreut. Wie viel Mal hab ich weit von Mensch, von Sohn, von Welt mit dir? O oh, Einsamkeit, verschlossen sich allein und mit dem Krankenschotten von a Lichtel, dich verspielt. Hat geblendet hat, hat New York, a Felsasa von Träum und Licht. Ich hab gesucht, a Spor von mein Holle, durch die zynische Feiern von der Nachtiker Stadt. Ist verdächtigter, a verdächtigter Heuscher gekommen mir entgegen. Ich habe gesucht dem Sinn von Freude in Umruf und Wander und begegnet blonde Dick an euch lachten Gott. Jetzt gebe ich euch ob alle Manien die Lichter für ein lichtig Wort was kann das triebe Herz zu scheinen. Jetzt gebe ich euch alle Heinen von Blumen 
und Bäum und Qual verneunten Blick von einem erst gekommenen Freund. Ich habe gehört, der Harfa sah durch alle Deures in a lang gegarter der Warter Minut. Jetzt, jetzt gebe ich euch ob Beethovens göttliche Symphonies für der gute Psäure, was es bringt, an überraschende Kohl. Menke was waiting for a gute Psäure. And Alexander Pomeranz, his first American best friend, explained Menke's mistakes. Menke Katz published almost exclusively in the press of the communist movement. Then he moved toward the right wing, challenging the leadership of Prolet Pen. And against the decision of the organization, he published a book of decadent anti proletarian poems, which he later disowned. Poetry should be poetry, not propaganda. Poetry, like a bird, speaks its own language. Und öfter, mein Kind. Und öfter, mein Kind, darf man sein alleine Feugel, kde die Sprache von Fegel zu verstehen. Und öfter, mein Kind, darf man sein allein erstehen, Kde mit der Stummkeit von Steiner zu reden. Norse kann doch verstehen, a viele a hilzender Narr, als wenn es nicht auch kein Saar, ist nicht auch was zu erzählen und Frieden. Und öfter, mein Kind, darf man sein allein der Messer, kde zu wissen, oi wie dem Korben ist euch dem Messer tot weh. Und öfter, mein Kind, Darf man sein allein das Geschrei, kadet zu wissen, ob Epis is von Pein größer, nor smeg doch wissen a viele a kritzen dicker Feind, als noch a Nacht von finsternischen allerlei, seht man ständig, wie der Sieg scheint. Last, Menke's poetry wandered, trying for several years to conform, to produce what they, in those circles, wanted. Finally, Menke produced a book, one they liked. Not only did his sentiments and ideas conform to their ideology, even the Hebrew words in Yiddish were uprooted from their origins. Nem ich dem elnt, und se foren im Suche, in ungehetzter Kuznie, Pun Albeter Poet, Schmiedig, Pun Frost, sitzt zunden im Hass, schmelzen sich Fersen unter Brask von Hammer, finkeln Werter auf brühendicker Kowadle, ist heiß der Stoll von ungeglitte Lieder, beugen sich Schures ungeglitte Stabes, und Werter staun sich in Rei wie Reute von Tovikes, nämlich dem Elm. Und sie fahren im Suche, in ungeheizter Kusnie von Alberter Poet, schmiedig von Frost, sie zunden im Hass, in jedes Wort mit Schreut geladen, und jeder Oss steht heul in Feier. Seine Lieder sorgen dicke Bolschewikes und strenge Wörter wesen, als man darf, ist man schmieden, und als man darf, is men peakers. When we need, we are blacksmiths. When we need, we are spears. His friends in those circles were happy that Menke had liberated himself from the past instead of sighing and weeping over loneliness and constantly looking death in the face, Menke took loneliness into the fiery blacksmith's shop and reforged it. Success. And Moishe Olgin found Benke's Amenchin Togen to be one of the most important and original revolutionary books. Although externally bathing in success, in his poet's heart, Menke was enveloped in sadness 
He wrote about himself ironically. O oh, Menke cuts of yesterday, if you died of sadness, I fit you into a death frame and purify myself in the fires of my awakened race. <laughs> Menke's authentic artistic voice was still connected to the homeland. In 1938, while the world went spinning into a war, Menke began to work on a manifesto of independence of poetry from politics. Again, memories of his childhood, Zichroines from World War I, his mystical Lithuanian shtetl comes to life in Brennendik shtetl, burning village, the pain, poverty, hunger, fear, and despair of war once again became the images and iconography of his poetry. A mall is given a mice. Yo, a mole is given a mice, a melancholy mice, a burned out cloud house. Gewalt, Menke, again the past? The prolet pen write ups began again. Menke Katz's leader, seinen nur wegen der Vergangenheit, nicht die Zukunft. Menke Katz's poems are only about the past, not the future. Menke Katz's leader bring in them Yiddish no arbiter nor umet, nit kein freid. Only sadness, not happiness. Menke Katz's leader hoben nit suton mit proletarische kam fara mer yoisher dicker welt. 
sie will nicht helfen, euch führen dem Kampf für eine mehr dicker Gesellschaft. These poems have nothing to do with the proletarian strife for a righteous world. They will not aid in the fight for a just society. Menke was taken aback. One Linke, Yitzchok Liebman, wrote, Gewalt! Menke Katz was caught writing poetry. Encouraged, Menke drummed back Die Tfile von Baraban. Die Tfile von Baraban. Weh, schreit das Blech von Baraban. Wie soll ich euch bänken, die Wolken, als nicht der Regen, nor a Hogel, harte Reid, beugt in mir. Kum, o oh Humet, kum, o oh Liebster, kum, weil anders ist on dir mein Fred von Fred, wie anders ist, a duftige Finsternis in freien Feld, von vermischbeter Finsternis in teuten Kammer, a treue Ricke fleht. Gib a Dunkelkeit, was noch bis leutesten Schein, a Schein, was nimmt a durch bis Dunkelkeit. Oh, gib a Fred, was scheu der Teuf bis Tränen, a Fred, a treuren dicke Fleit, was hebt die Tiefen auf und trockt sie bis der Bänken dickste Heucher auf. Oh, gib a Pein, was soll jonte, wenn die Woche. Who do you think? Hot geyonte wet die Woch? Wer hot gerate wet Menke? Who do you think came to solve the painful struggle of Menke Katz? The leftisten? The linke? No. <laughs> the right wingers? The rechte? No. Nope. Sein Bobe. Bobe Moine. Sie is gekommen zu ihm in Cholem. In a dream and wrote four poems and solved all the issues. Yes, Menkes Bobemoine embraced the shtetl Yiddish to lash out and answer back. Indeed, she made Menke into a brave coward and a revolutionary appeared. Oho, brave Pachten, dein poiken dicke Ruf, dat gewiss von Drimmel, at sitterich hazele wetten, nor ich welt zum schlach nit fieren, mein lied, mit streuen im guf, oi ba viele tausend mol reutze zunden, mit gewure von streu, wie kann men berg rieren, der mächtigen feind, wie wirst du schrecken, oi ba viele er soll allein sich binden, dein wort, a mill mit fantastischen Feust. Montfred, a flocken die Greus. Was kann nur umeticker sein? Von Greue Reid, a sa Sturm, wer kann der Herren? Mit Harz von Stoll, mit ruhig Blut, wie kann man schweren? Pavel Pachten was published in the Morning Freiheit accompanied by a letter to Olgin, decrying the homogeneity and false optimism of the poetry approved by the movement. Instead, Menke argued, even darkness can shine in true poetry. Artificially forced happiness is madness. When a proletarian writer is honest, it will be impossible for the injustice of the brutal world not to manifest itself in his work. And then the struggle for a new world, for a more beautiful human being will emanate, not mechanically, but organically. Bobe Moine emerged organically from Menke's deepest poetic soul. She came out of her grave bringing truth and to teach them nine door a little Jewish history and a lot of Derech Eretz. She made the darkness and the tragedy and the music of the shtetl past shine brightly.
פה במיכל השיק. איך, איך, איך בינדי בובה, מיכל השיק. פון מין ממס ברוסט, הוביך גזויגן. פון פון ברנה דיק שטקו, די צצון דנשרק. איך בינדי בודי בובה דולס, איברת חינה גבויגן. איך, איך, איך בינדי בובה דולס. דוס הארץ, פון הבלוי אופלה דוך בלנד פון פרוסט. מיין שרק איז היר של לייב תרשיש, הנגן דיק אינה פטלי אפון תפילן. מיין שרק איז אף ההינטישן אק הפוגרומיר טרטלס, ון פרדם חורף אין אורם קוידש, פון ה... פון הגשנטן בייס מדרש, פרגייטר זיכינה, שיידם דיק ביל. איך בין דיבובה פרגנגן הייט. נור גוט כן ריידן פון הזוי וייט? עוד מיינה טג זה אינן רוסט? אין גאנסן רוסט? עוד היא צייט פר בלוטיקט דם רוסט. איך בין טויד? איך בין טויד? אה, שוין דוירס טויד. נו, דוך מיינה איניק לך, בניך דר טויטן דיקסטר צוורן כגן הורמנה ונטורק ומאדן. איך בין נאכט, שוין דוירס נאכט. נור אין וונדן פון מיין פולק אונגטון, בי נכדר טוגן דיקסטר טוג, ווס ודינויט דם שייד דם חוישך פאר יוגן. מיין שטיבל? מיין שטיבל איז אורם. מיין שטיבל איז גרוי. הפינגר זונה ארד אלה אומת, ויצאת רוטן רויז די גרייס. דרי תרו מרזיך ארום. נור דם אייברשטן. אדנקון הלואיב. סהרץ? סהרץ איז נית אורן. סהרץ איז נית גרוי. זה. אפילת דיקה שויבן. עזת צויבר דיקה נחתי זרויס. הנחת מתפייגל. מיט וינט, מיט פלאטר דיקן וונדר, מיט ליכט גנוג אין ארשטר שוץ לטוגן. אוי, ונחזור נור מיין איניקל, ונחזור נור מיין איניקל פאר די גסט, די שטרן, מר קיבד, מר פנסטר לך פאר מוגן. In spite of turmoil, anger, betraying friends, and literary fights, Menke's heart's heart wasn't Orem. His heart wasn't gray. Menke was known to be a fun, party-loving man. In 1950, Menke met his second wife, partner, and artistic collaborator for all the remaining years of his life. She was the artist Rivke Feldman, And all the artwork in this program is her creation. Unser Programm is euch an ondenk for ihr. Two lovers for Rivke. Two lovers, mere souls escaped from Eden on one fig leaf like an elf's rowboat on the river Pishon. Two souls, one prayer. Kind winds rush us back to the good old earth, to tears, laughter, sin, love. Menke's love spreads beyond his family and home and emanates to Klali soil. 
In his final testament, he returns to the voice of Yiddish as a cherished inheritance of love and memory and perseverance. Herim Yiddish und Zerkol, mir soll mit werden kein Meißel von Amol. Okay. Yeah. The last will. All my love goes out to you into my softest teardrop. Hersha David, my son, tread softly on dust. Each grain aches like a wound. The dust under my feet is silence of the wailing slaughter in Svinshan, a mute last will of graveless Jews. Brother, we pulverized as fire and brimstone, smoke of gas ovens. May our rage at the enemy grow through you forever. In Yiddish, you can hear our voice. Let us not become a tale of once upon a time, a Kaddish for your holy people. Hear in Yiddish our voices, so we will never become the tales of once upon a time, not become a Kaddish for your people. Menke's incredible capacity to be the link between the heritage of the Yiddish folk and a pioneer of the Yiddish future was given public recognition for his work in English. He was the recipient of two Vincent Bennett Narrative Poetry Awards in 1970 and 1974. The English version of his Yiddish poem, The Epic Burning Village was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize Menke's prolific life's work includes nine books in English and nine in Yiddish and numerous essays. His poems have been translated into many languages, but Menke himself wanted to be remembered as a Yiddish poet. Indeed, his Yiddish crosses border and cultures. On my gravestone, brothers, sisters of mine, in the place where Yiddish is mute, as this very dust of my grave, there I have never lived. In the place where Yiddish weeps, as the ash of my villages, O Michalshik, O Tsinsian, there my father and mother weep. In the place where Yiddish laughs, sanguine as spring's wind, there my father and mother laugh. There I never stop laughing. There we never stop living. Brüder, Schwester meine, da wo Yiddish stummt, wie Ort der Stäub von meinem Käfer, dort hab ich kein Mal mitgelebt. Da wo Yiddish weint, wie der Asch von meiner Stimme. Oi Michalschik, oi Svinzian, Dort weint mein Tate und mein Mama. Dort höre ich kein Mal nicht euch weinen. Da, wo Jiddisch lacht, hoffe dich wie ein Frühling dicker Wind. Dort lacht mein Tate und mein Mama. Dort höre ich kein Mal nicht euch lachen. Dort hören mir kein Mal nicht euch leben. On his imagined gravestone, he envisions Yiddish crying and laughing and uniting us all. Thank you, Menke Katz, for your powerful poems. Your life's work is a celebration and an inspiration. And thank you, Hirsche David Katz, for being with us. Would you please share with us some words about your father? Thank you, yes, I'm very overwhelmed and listening to the deepest and most wonderful 
summary and presentation of my father's work. I've just torn up the remarks I prepared and I'll simply add a few personal notes if I can. Firstly, the first thought that comes to my mind, what would Menke say today? Well, he would say, wonderful, Lechaim, that you all came. And then he would say, I think this is proof there's a God that 30 years after his death and on his 115th birthday, Raquel Yosifon and, his, and her daughter, Marinka Yosifon, whom he never knew, have put together this incredible, incredible narrative of the various complex strands of his life. So Lechaim, and thank you. I send my personal greetings to my dear sister Troim, to my nieces Claudia and Shelley, uh, cousins Paula and Carla, and of course to the dear Stanley Barkin, who is a close friend of Menkes, to Barbara Harshav, who with our late Benjamin translated all nine Yiddish books. Menke would want me to mention two people who are no longer with us, his two most loyal friends during the Yiddish and English literary battles of his life. During the Yiddish battles, it was a, a writer who's tragically forgotten, William Abrams, and from the English period, the wonderful poet Harry Smith, a founder of the small magazine movement in America. From there, I'd like to say a few words about Menke. He was a lifelong vegetarian. Um, his escapades to rescue bugs and spiders and especially mice from the hands of humans became well known, not only in our house, but wherever we would go as guests. If there was a bug around, he knew that that creature of God was in danger from some human hand that be napkins and boards to get him out of here. You know, that became the, 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 one of the main things. So that, that vegetarianism was certainly a great motive in his life. Then as a Kabbalist, he often said that we are bashet, we are given, we are destined to have only a very limited time. It's like being in a line, in a queue, and this is our turn. So let's try to make the very best and make every day beautiful. So for him, a beautiful day was a day when he'd write poetry, and a bad day was a day when he couldn't or didn't write poetry. But he loved people. And for him, the greatest joy was to spend time with coffee or with a lechayim, with friends, with people you enjoy being with. Uh, two of his own favorite poems were Freind Bamtish in Yiddish from In Mitten Tog and um, his poem in English. It's a short haiku against travel and looking for glicken, looking for, wonder, for wonders and happiness by traveling when the greatest happiness is at the table. By contrast, the worst umglik, the worst disaster of a day would be meeting someone, and this was the dirtiest word in his vocabulary, the worst in the world, anudni, a bore, a pest, someone who leaves you disinspired for the rest of the day. So to stay away from nudnikes and to seek out inspiring people. He ate very little. Uh, he would never see a doctor. He wanted to be healthy and die suddenly. And God granted him that wish 30 years ago this week uh, at the age of 85. Um, if I have a few more minutes, I would just add a few of the personal versions of the stories you heard today uh, as, as he would tell them. Uh, let's start with 1906, the year he was born. It was supposed to be a girl because the parents had agreed to finally name someone for his father's mother who had died just when his parents got married. But one son was born, a second son, Menke was the third son, and the grandmother was Moine, and you can't call a boy Moine, so he became Menke. And so that's the origin of the name Menke, named for the grandmother. And then later, as you heard the Masha so beautifully read before, when the Prolet Pan Gang made fun of his poems in Brennan de Stettel of 1938 to his grandmother Moina and called her the Bobetolze, that, that's like Aunt Tilly, um, he 
responded with the book, Grandmother Moina Text. I remember as a boy when he was telling me these stories and I would say, did you answer them? And we could say, of course I didn't answer them. I wouldn't waste my time answering them. My grandmother Moina came in my dreams and dictated the book that appeared uh, in, 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 in 1939, Sohodos Walt, Moina. Well, you heard that Menke and his uh, siblings and mother came to America in 1920. On the way, they stopped uh, in Amsterdam. They saw the first black person they'd ever seen and were full of wonder at, at this amazing, amazing scene. When Menke got to New York, he ate a banana. He didn't know that you're supposed to take off the skin. He ate it with the skin and never touched the banana the rest of his life. And he never forgot that the first walk out of Passaic, New Jersey, he saw signs on every highway that said Kurve, C-U-R-V-E, Yiddish for prostitute. What is this America? There's a sign Kurve wherever you go. So these were the, the shocks of, of coming to a new world and, and, uh, and a new country. Well, um, you've heard about the 1920s and his meeting with Alexander Pomerantz. I'd like to say a word about Alexander Pomerantz, another great, great Yiddish poet uh, and writer, not appreciated and not part of this tiny canon today. Pomerantz was one of the founders of this whole, call it pen movement in 1925, together with the Russian poet Mayakovsky uh, produced Spartak, a trilingual Russian, Yiddish, English magazine in New York. Then the quote you heard before um, about Menke and Poet Penn comes from the period Pomerantz moved to the Soviet Union in the mid 1930s and wrote this dissertation in Kiev on Poet Penn. But what's perhaps forgotten, the same Alexander Pomerantz in the 1950s, when he learned of the murder of the Yiddish writers in 1952, led the movement of the writers away from the Linke to the Arbiterin, to the Shalom Aleichem schools, to the so-called Rechte, who were themselves far left by American standards, socialists, uh, uh, and, and so forth. Um, Pomeranz's book of 1962, The Sovetische Haruge Malchis, is a classic expose of the Soviet horrors. Um, the tragedy was not only Menkes. Many of the writers who left the left could not be accepted by the right in the McCarthy years and at the height of the Cold War when there was this fear of getting that visit from the FBI or from some law enforcement agency about connections to anything that's remotely, even in the past, has something to do um, with the Soviet Union. When uh, I was born, not only was Menke away from the left, he was a uh, dedicated to Israel, moved to Israel, lived there from 54 to 56. And my first memory in life is from a few days before my fourth birthday, that would be 1960, when we were stopped by a policeman in Svas and taken to the police station, you could call it arrested, he was accused of speaking Yiddish in public when he was uh, when he had his position as a Hebrew teacher in a government school. I remember weeping uncontrollably, and I also remember when we got to the police station, the chief of police was a friend of the family, very apologetic for this idiot policeman who took us in, and he opened a bottle of wine. But that night. Menke said to me, it's the first line I remember, so I remember almost nothing of the boat. The next memories are all of New York. During my childhood, Menke made some attempts to continue to get into the non-leftist Yiddish literary world. And there was the famous affair with the Zukunft and Gladstein when his poems were rejected, but when he sent other poems under his mother-in-law's name, my grandmother, Clara Feldman, they were readily accepted. And in those years, he was uh, writing more and more English and found personal literary happiness in the English world until his last year, 1990, when I made my first trip to 
uh, Lithuania and Belarus to see Mikhalashit Sviran Svensyan. There's some video um, on, on, on the web of that trip. And when I came back, I remember I postponed my classes in Oxford for a week. Uh, they will wait. I have to bring Menke the videos and the pictures of Mikhalashit. He said he had a dream this time of his mother, Badana, coming to tell him to stop writing in English. And the last six months of his life, he wrote Menke's sonnets. Those are the triangles in declining or increasing number of syllables that you heard so beautifully read today from his, from his last months. So let me say L'chaim and Menke, wherever he is, says L'chaim and thank you. And let's meet for happy days and the love of poetry. Shakoya. I mean, thank you so much, David. Uh, we've heard so many wonderful things about Menke's life, about his poems and their uh, different iterations in the past. Now, let's hear a bissel about the future of Menke's poetry. Um, please welcome Mr. Stanley Barkan. You heard his voice before. Uh, reading a poem earlier in the program. He is uh, the head of cross-cultural communications. Uh, Stanley, are you here? Can you give us a taste of the coming project? Is that Stanley? Stanley? No Stanley. Okay, well, um, here is Menke. Again, I will just say that uh, Stanley Barkan, who is the editor of Cross-Cultural Communications, has taken on a fantastic project um, as part of Menke's Yorzeit. And he has taken this poem, On the Death of a Day-Old Child, which comes from Menke's book, Land of Mana. All dead, day-old children will welcome you. Wind will sing my lullabies to you. When the sun falls, where the saddest grass grows, you are the beginning when light is wise. God will guard to the end of days your day in the land of mana, Eden of bread. With ray and shade, you will play pranks all day. Autumn will teem with the brown of your eyes. With my grief forever, my grief will forever weep the dew. Stanley's wonderful project is to take this poem and have it translated into as many phenomenal exotic languages as they can. This is a work in progress. Those of you that have received the program uh, can find out how to contact him about it and hopefully it'll be forthcoming. Um, and on, on that very uh, uplifting and optimistic uh, future for Menke's publications. I want to say thank you to the Kiever Synagogue for putting this on. I want to say thank you, Dovid Katz, for all of your wonderful help uh, in bringing this program together. Thank you to Raquel Yosifon, the incredible mastermind behind this project and, uh, and, and its artistic creator and director. Uh, to our wonderful partners uh, at the UJA Committee for Yiddish, especially Vivian Felsen. Uh, and also our dear friends at the Toronto Workmen's Circle, uh, headed by Mel Cederbaum, uh, to Noyach and Gustavo, Yiddish with Noyach, for their great help in spreading the word, to Beit Leivik and Daniel Galai, and all of the institutional support you've given. And finally, I want to thank uh, Alex Weiser over at EVO for also supporting us in, uh, in making this project known. Thank you all for coming to share this afternoon or evening or morning with us. Uh, have a wonderful day. Zeit gesund. Thank you so, so, so very much. Ashenem Dank.